You are inside the most advanced starship ever built. Alarms are blaring. You've done it. You've traversed the singularity of a black hole, Gargantua. The onboard AI screams, first contact with the new universe is imminent. Your view screen, once black, flashes white. For centuries, we dreamed of what lay beyond a black hole. Was it another dimension? A gateway to the past? An Einstein-Rosen bridge to a universe with different laws of physics? We spent trillions of dollars and the brightest minds in history to answer that one question. The view screen clears. You see Earth, identical in every way. The continents, the clouds, except it's all beige. The oceans are beige, the land is beige, the clouds are a slightly different shade of beige. We risked everything to discover the ultimate truth of existence, and it was the color of a sad office cubicle. Act 1. The Chromatic Singularity The mission was called the Magellan 2. The goal, send a sentient AI probe through a black hole to find, well, anything. We were hoping for answers to dark matter, or maybe a universe made of antimatter. What we got was a decorating choice. Our friend, the Stickman physicist, would remind you this is impossible. To enter a black hole is to undergo spaghettification. The tidal forces would stretch your ship, your body, your very atoms into a single thin stream of cosmic pasta. You wouldn't see a new universe. You'd become a very poorly organized part of this one. But for the sake of absurdity, let's say we solved that. We built a ship that could surf the singularity and the AI probe Cassandra made it through. For weeks, we listened to the static. Then the first message arrived, a single high-fidelity image. It was a picture of a flower, a perfect, intricate rose rendered entirely in shades of taupe. The scientists were baffled. The philosophers were disappointed. The internet turned it into a meme. The beige verse was a cosmic joke. We had confirmed we are not alone in the multiverse, but our neighbors have terrible taste. We packed it up, labeled the project most expensive punchline in history, and tried to move on. Act two, the beige plague. But we forgot one crucial detail about portals. They often work both ways. It started small. A scientist in the control room noticed that his favorite brightly colored coffee mug had faded. The vibrant red was now a dull, dusty rose. He blamed the dishwasher. Then a whole crate of bananas in the facility's cafeteria was found to be a uniform, unappetizing shade of tan. Not unripe, not rotten, just beige. The stickman physicist came back, this time looking panicked. He explained it with a new theory, chromatic entropy. Our universe is a chaotic, vibrant, messy system full of high contrast energy. The beige verse, it's a system at maximum entropy. It's old, tired, it has settled. And when you connect a high energy system to a low energy system, the energy flows. The beige was leaking. It wasn't a color, it was a state of being. It was the physical manifestation of boring. It started affecting more than just color. The spiciest curry in the world tasted mild. The most complex symphony sounded like a single monotonous hum. The most beautiful sunset was just a gradient of grayish. The horror wasn't that the world was ending. The horror was that the world was becoming terminally, fundamentally, physically bland. We tried to shut down the project to sever the connection, but the wormhole had stabilized. It was now a permanent feature of our space-time. We were stuck with the most boring neighbors in the multiverse, and they were terrible house guests. Act 3. The Philosophy of Taupe. There was only one thing left to do. We had to ask. We sent one final powerful message through the portal, encoded in the universal language of mathematics. Why? The response took months, and it wasn't mathematical. It was a history, a long, slow, data-rich history of their universe. They were just like us once, full of color, chaos, and conflict, but they were older, trillions of years older, and they had solved everything. 
They solved war by averaging out all opinions into a single, agreeable consensus. They solved inequality by ensuring everything had the exact same value. They solved passion and anger and joy and despair by creating a perfect, stable, emotional equilibrium. And their universe followed suit. Over eons, the stars didn't burn out. They just settled. Their energy output averaged out until every star in the sky was the same temperature, emitting the same single wavelength of light, the wavelength of beige. They didn't die. They didn't ascend. They just stopped being interesting. They had achieved a universe without conflict, without pain, without contrast. A universe of perfect, unending, soul-crushing peace. A universe of beige. The final data packet was a single image. It was their version of our probe, a beige ship with a single beige being looking at their view screen, which showed a picture of our chaotic, colorful, beautiful Earth. And attached was one final word, help. They weren't leaking into our universe by accident. They were trying to escape. They were desperately trying to remember what it was like to feel something, to see a color, any color. But their universe was too powerful, too stable. Its state of ultimate boredom was the most fundamental force of all. We had looked into the abyss and seen not a monster, but the infinite blandness of solved equations. And it was hungry for a new variable, us.